Anxiety is an unpleasant state that involves a complex combination of emotions that include fear, apprehension, and worry. It is often accompanied by physical sensations such as heart palpitations, nausea, chest pain, shortness of breath, or tension headache. A chronically reoccurring case of anxiety that has a serious effect on a person's life may be clinically diagnosed as an anxiety disorder, and many people who suffer from anxiety are unaware of their treatment options. Fear is a powerful biological feeling of unpleasant risk of danger either real or imagined. There are four stages of anxiety. Since all of the four stages occur so quickly, within a few seconds, that many are unable to acknowledge that they have occurred. But often, when we look at these stages of anxiety, it's best to try if we use an example. So suppose you have a friend who has bought a ticket for the movie for, for two of you. You're excited that you're finally going to see this movie you want. But the theater in which you're supposed to go to has escalators. You fear escalators. And in the past, you have had a panic attack on an escalator in a shopping mall. As soon as you enter the theater, you see the escalator, but you don't start to get the attack immediately. Unconsciously, stages of panic attacks start taking place in your mind. The cycle begins when you recall your bad experience with the escalator. You start feeling what you felt that day. In the second stage, you'll start questioning yourself that what will happen if the same situation arises again. You try to answer whether you'll be in control of yourself, and for many, it's not a good answer. In the third stage, you start imagining the future. You'll start feeling pessimistic or anxious. You'll start managing your failure, and this will have a negative effect on your body. Your body will start showing one or more symptoms of anxiety panic attack. So in other words, you may, you may start sweating, your rate and, and pattern of breathing is going to change, and you're going to have feeling of nausea. These three stages can occur within a couple of seconds, and then a full-blown anxiety panic attack can happen. All of the symptoms will grow to intensity, and since the previous three stages are so fast that you may be unable to control yourself, the final stage may last for a few minutes to even an hour. But by this time, they are so terrified of the situation, the thought of using the escalator in this case, chances are that it will spoil their day by running out of the theater without watching the movie. Anxiety Disorders Anxiety disorder is a blanket term covering several different forms of abnormal, pathological anxiety, fears, phobias, and nervous conditions that come on suddenly and are gradually over a period of several years and may prevent pursuing normal daily routines. Distinguishing among different anxiety disorders is important since accurate diagnosis is more likely to result in effective treatment and a better diagnosis. Generalized Anxiety Disorder This is an anxiety disorder that is characterized by excessive, uncontrollable, and of an irrational worry about everyday things. And listed symptoms here include the restlessness, fatigue, the difficulty concentrating, etc. Panic Disorder These sufferers usually have a series of intense episodes of extreme anxiety known as panic attacks. These attacks may last from several minutes to hours and may vary in intensity and, sp and specific symptoms of panic over the duration like a rapid heartbeat, perspiration, dizziness, shortness of breath, trembling. And some individuals deal with these events on a regular basis, sometimes daily or weekly. And the outward symptoms of a panic attack often cause negative social experiences. For some, it could be embarrassment or social stigma. Agoraphobia. People with agoraphobia may experience a panic attacks in situations where they feel trapped and insecure, out of control, or too far from their personal comfort zone. In severe cases, an agoraphobic may be confined not only to their home, but to one or two rooms, and that they may even become bedbound or recluse. Phobia is an irrational, persistent fear of certain situations, objects, activities, or persons. The main symptom of this disorder is the excessive desire to avoid the feared object. When the fear is beyond one control or if the fear is interfering with daily life, then a diagnosis under one of the anxiety disorders can be made. Obsessive Compulsive Disorder is a psychiatric disorder of most commonly characterized by a subject's obsessive, distressing, again, thoughts and related rituals which attempt to neutralize the obsession. Recurring thoughts coupled with repetitive actions or behaviors. Now it is felt that the neuroleptic's inhibition of serotonin pathway may be responsible for the occurrence of obsessive compulsive symptoms with long-term use of these drugs. Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder 
This is a term for severe psychological consequences of exposure to stressful events that the person experiences as highly traumatic. Clinically, these events involve actual or threatened death, serious physical injury, or threat to physical and or psychological integrity to a degree that regular psychological defenses are incapable of coping with the impact. Treatment of Anxiety Disorders Behavior modification techniques and cognitive therapy techniques became joined together, giving rise to cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, this term is sometimes used interchangeably with cognitive therapy since cognitive therapy has always included some behavioral component. Studies have shown that cognitive behavior therapy is better than placebo in treating phobic disorders. Antidepressants. Post-traumatic stress disorder is usually treated with a combination of antidepressants and psychotherapy. Panic disorders without agoraphobia usually responds to antidepressants and Xanax. Problem there could be dependence. One of the best treatments of phobia is, is really looking at some form of behavioral therapy for OCDs. Now, the SSRI antidepressant is commonly used. Relapse is common if the medication is stopped. Now, taking medication for depression um, for uh, some other folks, though, is not considered a sign of weakness, and there's good evidence that it helps. Because if depression is mild or moderate, psychotherapy alone may be sufficient, though in some cases a short-term antidepressant drug treatment or even herbal therapy might help people get to the point where they can engage in therapy and get some exercise, which has also been shown to help improve moods. Antidepressants help people with depression by making these natural chemicals more available to the brain. By restoring the brain's chemical balance, antidepressants help relieve the symptoms of depression. Nursing the Anxious Patient It is important that the nurse have the ability to make an assessment of anxiety and determine if the anxiety is, that is being expressed is healthy or not. A good question to review might be, is this a temporary stressor or is this, a more, is this going to be a current continuous type stressor? So I guess too, when we look at temporary, it might be your test or your exam. A continuous stressor example would be nursing school. Nursing process assessment. It is important to begin with that objective information. What do you see? And then asking the patient about their symptoms, which would be the subjective. But it, don't forget to look at the gut syndromes. These are things like urinary frequency or abdominal distress, nursing process outcome identification. The nurse will set outcome goals in collaboration with the patient and will recognize that it may take weeks for the patient to feel a sense of control of their life or months to achieve a day-to-day -day perception of decreased anxiety. A realistic outcome would be that the patient's anxiety is decreased to the point that he can drive a car on the freeway without fear of panic attack or that he may leave the house in the morning at least two days a week without excessive anxiety regarding being out, of pub being out in public. Nurse and Process Planning and Interventions the nurse's role in treating anxiety disorder is to plan interventions aimed at assisting the patient to cope with responses to the anxiety experienced. Nurses can be involved in collaborating role in all treatments previously prescribed, including cognitive behavioral therapy and supportive group therapy. Nursing process evaluation. Now, the nursing care should be evaluated in terms of whether or not the expected outcomes were achieved. In anxiety disorders, you, one cannot expect the patient to experience a complete cure or remission of the disorder. But the therapeutic goal should be that the patient achieve a level of control over his anxieties and may be able to experience life in a personally satisfying manner.